Hylian Bandicoot says, what sort of customization options would you like to see in future Zelda games? Hmm. You know what? I think I'd like to see them wear like different outfits and have different hats. That give them different powers. That... <laughs> no. Because you're talking about a game they're making. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am, sadly. Let it be known. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What, what would you like to see? Because I... I don't know. I I don't really have any big ideas at the moment. What what are your ideas? Yeah. Um. I think they're get, going in a great direction with what I've seen of Zelda Wii U, in in that they'll be able to. Uh, it looks like put beacons on the map, like kind of customize your experience with the map. Um, leave markers on places you want to return to, or uh, put a point on the map that you can see on the TV screen mm -hmm. um, of where you should be heading like the general direction um, i know beacons aren't anything new to open world games but it is is new to zelda mm -hmm. um, and i think with the open world of zelda wii u we'll have to have a stronger map experience and they did some of that stuff with the ds games because you could take out the map and draw on it and mark on it and stuff mm -hmm. um i'd like to see more of that better ways to to keep track of your progression through this giant world that we'll be introduced to in Zelda Wii U. Mm -hmm. All right. I think besides that, like the only thing I can think of is maybe having some options for like an alternate, possibly an alternate main weapon. Mm. Cause pretty much all we've seen for main weapons are the master sword. Yeah. You know, we always have the sword. What if Link had a hammer what if Link had, you know, something else for his main weapon? I'm not talking about an item that you uh, can use. Like in the beginning of the game, if you could choose what kind of training you wanted to go to. Exactly. You could change, like, your whole path at the beginning. Say, I don't want to learn how to use swords. I want to learn how to use battle axes. Or yeah. I want to learn how to use, you know, lances. Or what, whatever it may be. Maybe a different, completely different take on it. Hmm. Um, Good stuff. Something like that. Yeah. And you know what? We did not see a sword in the Zelda Wii U trailer. That Link. That's true. He's got that a, is a bow true. and arrow. Yeah. So, da, da, da. You never know. You never know. All right. Last one for us at uh, Two Button Crew. Nim Niminator asks If you could take and combine features from any and every Zelda game so far and make a new Zelda game out of them all, what features would you take? what games hmm. first one that comes to mind is a mechanic i really enjoyed link between worlds was turning flat i thought that was hmm. super cool i really enjoy the um the mask features mm -hmm. from majora's mask and i maybe i'm in a minority maybe some of you out there relate to me is i really enjoy the time mechanic okay from uh majora's mask i think that having like a time mechanic hmm. along with like a dark world, light world mechanic, like we've seen in several entries already. I think that mixing those two would be an interesting combination. Yeah. How about like fast travel that was in Ocarina of Time through mm -hmm. the songs you would learn? I use those all the time, especially mm -hmm. since I was going for completion. Yeah. Like trying to get every heart piece and stuff. It was invaluable to be able to just play a little song and next thing i know i'm at a certain temple or certain place is very good mm -hmm. i think i i think that the the main um the main mechanics um like the the time mechanics and the lark the lark dite the dark light worlds um those are the big ones for me yeah. maybe um i haven't completed i've started to play but i haven't completed the Oracle of Ages, mm -hmm. and I know that has a little bit of time travel mechanic as, in it as well. So time travel, yeah, time travel, world travel, dimension travel, well, flight travel. This has been good. It has nice questions, guys. Thank you very much for asking. Keep them coming to the mailbag, and thanks for letting us be a part of this segment. We are Two Button Crew, and we have a daily show for Nintendo fans on our channel. So again, thanks for just for the opportunity to hang out with you guys. Absolutely. This is Two Button Crew signing up. Question number nine comes from Logan Johnson, who asks, "Do theory questions count? If so, what's your take on Twilight's being banished Sheikah? Do you know that theory?" I know the theory pr 
pretty well. Uh, my good friends Andy from McIntyre Productions and HMK both did videos covering this theory, and I actually did an article on, I think, both videos for ZeldaUniverse.net. And, well, a little brief history lesson. Uh, the Sheikah go back all the way to the early Zelda games and the Twilight are first introduced in Twilight Princess. Uh, the Sheikah are a very well-known powerful race that were banished. Uh, nobody really knows what happens to them. There's a few clues but that's all we know and we know the Twilight were a also a powerful race and they were banished to the Twilight Realm. Uh, if you take both backstories, there's a huge connection. So I think the, I mean, it's a pretty solid theory once you connect the dots, but Nintendo has this problem where they, well, it's not really a problem, but they focus on gameplay and then they add the story in last. And that leaves a lot of plot holes, mysteries, and questions to be answered, and they never really get around to answering those questions that you think they're going to tie up the loose ends in the next installment in the series, but you just get left with even more questions. And while it may be an unintentional connection between the Twilight and the Sheikah, uh, it could be Miyamoto or Aonuma's intent to have them be two completely different tribes, but they've never officially stated, so the question's left to interpretation, and I think if you want to believe it, the evidence is there, and if you feel they should be two different tribes, then, I mean, it's really up to you. Our final question comes from HappyDog664 who asks, How do you think Link and Zelda Wii U did get the shirt from Wind Waker and the towel from Skyward Sword and all of the things with the Sheikah symbol? Nothing is confirmed yet, so all we can do is speculate, and one of my theories is that Zelda Wii U will either be a sequel to Skyward Sword where they first visit Hyrule, their starting tribes, maybe it's a son, a grandson, or some ancestor of Link from Skyward Sword and there's already villages settled and some of the items uh, from Skyward Sword are sort of uh, cherished relics passed, passed down through the family such as the a uh, cell cloth from Skyward Sword and with the blue tunic um, I mean Aonuma stated that he wanted Zelda Wii U to be a different style game so maybe this is one of his ways of making it different is instead of giving you a green tunic you're given this blue tunic, it does look pretty similar to Wind Waker, which then you could say uh, the game takes place in New Hyrule. The blue tunic looks similar to the tunic worn by Link in the Wind Waker, in which case you could say Zelda Wii U takes place after Phantom Hourglass, which is also a sequel to the Wind Waker. But before Spirit Tracks, uh, Link is now an adult, which we've seen design art from Link in the Wind Waker as an adult in Hyrule Historia. So we know they were at least thinking about the ideal of Link becoming an adult from Wind Waker, and maybe this is that game. Uh, maybe that Link discovered new Hyrule, is going around to all the different tribes and races on the game, or in New Hyrule, uh, or maybe this was a land that he discovered before New Hyrule that was turned out to be too dangerous to live on, uh, with uh, the mechanical monster that we see chasing him on Epona, or whatever the horse's name is in the trailer, 
I mean, it could really be anything. And another theory of the Sheikah, maybe this link is a part of the Sheikah tribe. We've had Link that was a part of the island tribe uh, in Wind Waker. We've had a Link being part of the farmers in Ordon Village. We've had Link being uh, part of the Kakiri tribe or race in Ocarina of Time. Um, he was sort of an outcast in Majora's Mask, but the same Link from Ocarina of Time. In all these Zelda games, Link's given similar origins, or he's given different origins that all just have their own uniqueness to them. Uh, maybe this Zelda game has Link being a member of the Sheikah tribe. Um, as I've said, I think this Zelda Wii U could be a celebration or a reboot of the Zelda series taking place in a new timeline or at the very end of the timeline in a new Hyrule so they don't have to worry about the Temple of Time has to be here, the Forest Temple has to be here, this dungeon has to be there, this race has to be in the game. There's just all this stuff to keep up with that limits you when you're making a game. So maybe they're trying to avoid that by taking all of the great elements from the Zelda series that they loved and putting them all in a mixing pot and creating this reboot of the Zelda series with all the things that we all love. And who knows? I mean, your guess is honestly as good as mine for an actual answer. We'll just have to wait and see. And since the game's been delayed, maybe the blue tunic, the Sheikah symbol, some of the stuff could have changed, been taken out, redone, recolored. He could have a red suit, yellow, white. We really don't know. Uh, they could have even went back to green. Uh, it's all up to speculation, but I would love to hear your thoughts on how he got these items or fell into possession of them. Alright guys, this is the end of episode 2 of the Game Over Jesse Zelda Mailbag. Thank you all so much for the support that you've given this series and this channel. Over 1,000 of you tuned in to watch the first episode of the Mailbag and gave your questions to be answered on this episode. So please continue to send in your questions to this episode so we can answer them on the third episode. Sadly, Amanda and Simon could not be with us in this episode, but hopefully they will make a return in a future episode. So give a big thanks to Scott and Simeon from the Two Button Crew for filling in for them on this episode, and hopefully they'll be back as guest hosts on a future episode. Please head over to their channel, watch their content, they somehow managed to do a different video covering something new in Nintendo every single day, and yet they still had time to film this mailbag, so please go support them. They have really great content, and if you're a Nintendo fan, you will love them. As for this episode's winner, uh, finally getting to it, is Neminator, whose question was answered by the Two Button Crew. He asked, if you could take and combine features from any slash every Zelda game so far and make a new Zelda game out of them, what features and what games would you get them from? That question is something I think every Zelda fan has often thought about, because if you could take away the worst parts of the games and just pick apart each Zelda game that you liked for the best items, the best weapons, the best quests, dungeon bosses, enemies, gameplay mechanics, and made your own Zelda game out of them, it would be awesome. And I would love to hear your all's ideal Zelda game as well, so leave them in the comments. And 
Honestly, I think that's what Zelda is going to be, as I stated earlier, uh, a reboot or celebration of the entire Zelda series. We've seen uh, different elements taken from different Zelda games, such as Skyward Sword, Wind Waker, the visuals from the Sheikah tribe. It looks like Nintendo is just getting rid of almost everything that connects the Zelda timeline and just maybe creating a brand new timeline. So look forward to Zelda Wii U, look forward to a third mailbag, look forward to new Zelda news, theories and rumor videos from myself, and look forward to great content from the Two Button Crew. Thank you all for your questions. And Nominator, Niminator, sorry if I got your name wrong, please message me, tweet at me, do something to get in touch with me, or I will try to get in touch with you. But your prize is a Steam download for the brand new game, Coffin Dodgers. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe.